Hey everyone, it's Lisa, aka Cosmic Mermaid. Welcome to my channel. Today we are playing The Sims 4 New Crest Witches. I'm so excited to be bringing this series to my channel. I've been wanting to do a witch series or LP for a long time and it took me a while to come up with kind of like the storyline and the backstory and the plot and everything. So I'm excited to bring to you the first actual episode. Hopefully you've watched the backstory which gave some information about our lead character here, Andromeda Casparini. And as you can see, she's grown up. If you watch the backstory, she was a teen. Now she's a young adult. She just finished her priestess training and has been sent to Newcrest by her family, a powerful witch clan, to prove her worth and to see if she actually has the power that they say she has. She Watch the backstory, you'll get the whole thing, but... Um, her family is a witch family clan, and they want to join forces with the powerful Stroud family of vampires to create one powerful witch vampire clan, which has never been done in the history of witches and vampires. Um, they've always been at odds with, e with each other. So both families kind of have their own agenda, but they're not, you know, letting on to each other what that is. They're trying to, you know, make it seem like they want to join forces and create one powerful clan. So they decided the way to do that is to marry off Andromeda to the Stroud family's only heir, whose name is Vance, and create powerful vampire witch babies and <laughs> also create powerful witch vampire dynasty. So here we are with Andromeda. I think she must be tending the garden. She's watering things. And she is here in Newcrest. She's not really, she doesn't want to, you know, marry Vance. He's kind of creepy. Uh, she doesn't want to start no, a powerful witch vampire coven or anything. She it loves being a witch. She She's incredibly smart and, and incredibly powerful, but um, she doesn't want to use her powers in that way to create some kind of clan that is under the control of the parents and not really under her control. So, but she did do what her parents asked her to do, which was to move here to Newcrest and prove her worth as a high priestess if she can start a coven and then from that coven have kind of like an offspring of six different covens. And if she's able to, you know, go and and make this and make this work. So they set her up in Newcrest here. I'm just going to pause this. And she has a. They set her up in Newcrest in this gorgeous house. It's a old Victorian. I did not build this. The builder of this house, her name is Tiny Joy. Now I will link her channel and the build of this house. In the description box below you'll definitely want to watch it she was inspired to build this house by a movie called the love witch and you can hear all about her inspiration in the video but it's it's this really awesome old victorian and i redid a lot of the inside to fit my storyline and added this garden and backyard because they actually have this is going to be the coven house so there's a lot of different rooms and things, and you'll see as we go along with the Let's Play, but in Tiny Joy Now's build, she created this upstairs part as an apartment. So this is Andromeda's place up here. Um, she has a living room. You enter over here through the steps from downstairs. She has this living room area. She has an altar here. Um, she's got a few altars. She's got another little altar here. She has her own little altar room slash witchy uh, 
<laughs> I don't know what you call it, witchy potion room where she brews up potions and things. And then she has a small kitchen, which is right here. Kitchen, you can see it there. And a dining area. And her bathroom is up here as well, over here in this corner. And then, of course, here's her bedroom. Downstairs, she has rooms and things set up for the coven members that she will be finding and, and initiating as witches and then, or, or kind of giving them the power of witchcraft and then initiating them as witches and priestesses. So, um, of course, the lights aren't on, but... She, there's a bedroom here, there's a bedroom over here, and then there's a nice big kitchen and a table and a living area, and there's like a little altar here, and then there's a back door that goes out to the backyard and that, and there's a bathroom here, and then you go down into the basement and there's more bedrooms and more fun things. Yes, that is a coffin, I'll explain that in a minute. So you come down here, maybe I should turn the lights on. Turn on all lights. We don't need to worry about the bills because Andromeda it comes from a very wealthy witch family and her family has set her up pretty nicely and they're going to fund this whole shindig. So, and she's taking the money. She's like, if they're going to force me into trying to get me to marry this weird vampire guy, I'm going to make the most of it. And, um, you know, she can definitely use this time to get to know herself more and also up her powers and things like that. So, and initiating other witches is part of her learning experience as well. So down here we have like a study area with lots of books and things because there's going to be a lot of studying and things. There's a computer and a, and a organ and a painting and another uh, really cool altar area here. And then there is a bedroom here with a regular bed and in a coffin because part of the agreement with the vampires was that she needs to initiate one vampire into as a witch and that vampire will create a, their own coven. So that's the six covens will include a vampire coven. And then over here is kind of like this funky space age looking room <laughs> lots of colors and things and this and she also needs to initiate one alien into the coven um so there's two beds in here that can be shared and then this bedroom here belongs to her cousin amethyst who's sleeping i'll introduce you to her in a minute um she's she's going to be um initiated as a high priestess soon by andromeda and so yeah there's a couple of few bedrooms down here and then there is this area over here where they keep um, lab equipment and, and specimens and things like bugs and frogs and fish and things that they need for creating potions there is a crystal ball here um, this is a hidden room and this is a hidden room so only people in within the coven or within the household can access it over here is another altar room, which, and all of this I created. I don't think there was a basement in Tiny Joy Now's build, so I created all this down here. Um, and I don't know about this altar area. I might change it as the uh, Let's Play progresses, but yeah, this is kind of like an altar room, a ceremonial room. And that's pretty much it. There's a bathroom down here. Yeah, there's a bathroom down here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, and I'll show you the backyard. There's a nice garden area. They have a bubble blower, of course. There's another lovely altar out here. And... There's, the, of course, the wishing well, just some garden things, you know, a place to sit out and cook. And, and there's a bar here and yoga mat and, you know, a treadmill for exercising. And then they also have a jacuzzi or whatever that is, a spa tub, hot tub. So that is the house, the coven house. And across the street is her shop which is the exact same house 
I just, because I loved it so much and I love the Victorian theme. So I made the shop in this coven house or in this Victorian house, which is the exact same house. I just colored it red and white and I just use a portion of it because obviously you don't need a store that big. So her potions and brews shop is right across the street from her house. Yeah, so this is the Coven, the Newcrest Coven House. And I'm excited and very thankful for Tiny Joy now for creating this gorgeous Victorian. Um, and you definitely want to check out her YouTube channel. She does some really cool Let's Plays. And she um, has the build of this. And she does some other really awesome builds as well. So definitely check her out. So let's see, what is Andromeda doing? Oh, she's still... She is still tending to the garden. What is Amethyst needs to go to work? Amethyst, so let's introduce you to Amethyst. Where are you, girl? Get up. Wow, oh, there she is. Amethyst is her cousin, her mother, sister's daughter. Get up, Amethyst, because and Amethyst is a writer. She is all about knowledge and wisdom and reading and and um I'll pause this because she's very hungry and I need to get to that part too. So this this video is kind of just going to be a setup and talk about the characters and everything. So this is Amethyst Casparini. She's a young witch. She's very smart, just like Andromeda. She is a she encompasses the energy of the East, which is represents the energy of air and knowledge and wisdom and learning and um, creativity and things like that. So she um, is a writer and she also <laughs> has the unfortunate rare trait of a succubus, which is very rare for witches. And it's something that isn't really, uh, they don't, uh, it's kind of frowned upon in, in the witch community. Now, that's saying there's most witches frown upon it because the Casparini family is a very powerful witch clan. They're very old and they just love having any kind of power that they can possibly get. However, being a succubus, you know, being frowned upon by most of the witch community and most of the occult or supernatural community. However, you know, there is some power in being a succubus. So they, kind of, you know, embrace it, but they also, you know, don't want her using running around using that power too much. Now, what a succubus is, is she drains energy from um, romantic interests and romantic relations and things like that. So she doesn't need to eat food. She can eat food, but it doesn't really fill her need. She's insatiable. She needs to drain energy from others. But what's, what's interesting about Amethyst is that she isn't really into relationships and she's, she's kind of, you know, she's always into books and reading and, and she's not really into, um, you know, luring men or even women or whoever and, and draining their energy sexually or, or romantically or intimately. So she kind of struggles with <laughs> this, uh, trait. Yeah, look at her. She's like rolling her eyes with this trait of being a succubus as well. So her hunger is getting down there. And the only way that she can feed is to drain the energy from other, other Sims and others. So where are we? Oh, she's going upstairs. She has to go to work. She is a writer. Where is she going? Oh, she's going out to talk to Andromeda. Okay. So her and Andromeda you know, they get along, they're friends, and they get along. Um, however, you know, they're kind of almost opposites. Andromeda is very much into being a witch and being powerful. She's, witches are neither bad or good. They're not good or evil. They can't have the good or evil trait because they're neutral. Um, but if there was anything as, such as a good witch, it would be Amethyst. She and she really doesn't want to. I mean, she is very powerful and she has a lot of knowledge because she reads a lot. But she doesn't want to use her witch powers very often. She's just not all into being the witchy type of type of thing, um, like a stereotypical type of witch. You know, she likes to use her powers. She is a witch. She has to use her powers. And she likes to use her powers to gain more knowledge or to help others gain more knowledge. 
and she's um she's definitely very neutral when it comes to that kind of thing and now she's going downstairs to our oh she's still cleaning up i don't know she's kind of weird and so we'll find out more about amethyst as the as the let's play in the series goes on she they're they're, they're kind of exact opposites it's not as though ameth or it's not as though as andromeda is a bad witch or evil or anything she's very neutral and she uses her do we not have a oh she's going to work okay she's not bad or evil or anything like that she is just she is very neutral and she will use her powers however she sees fit and she's very wise we're going to see what she's got going on while she's watching tv so today she needs to go it's nine o'clock she needs to go and open up the shop what she loves to do is help people. She likes to do readings with the crystal ball and prescribe healing herbs and teas and things like that and just help people through their life with by means of magic. So let's go next door and open up the shop. Andromeda has the power to teleport, as most witches do. All the witches have the power to teleport and levitate, and so she likes to te teleport every once in a while. <laughs> so she's in here in her shop. I'm going to pause just to show you the shop just a little bit. You probably saw, if you watch my Black Widow challenge videos, you've seen the shop. Here it is a little more up close and personal. It's just this main floor part of the room, or part of the house. And then here's a bathroom, and then I have just this, this little kitchen area over here for the shop owner and family members can only access this back area. Um, the upstairs, you can't access. It's just this downstairs area where the shop is. And so I just kind of decorated this myself and set it up with a lot of just fun crystals and potions and things like that, and statues and things that... You know, of course, Andromeda has conjured and created energy in that will give special powers and things to people who own these items. And so that's what she does. That's And that's what she loves to do. So we're going to let her go to the bathroom and then we're going to open up the shop for the day. So part of Andromeda, what Andromeda needs to do is find people that or women because only witches okay so the here's the story about witches 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 can be women or men they can be male or female however women are only born witches and can only make witches so the only way a male can be a witch is if he's born to a female witch so uh, mothers make witches, basically, or women can give the power of witchcraft to another woman. So what Andromeda needs to do is kind of use her intuition and her witch powers to find women in town or in the area that have the best traits to become a witch. And she can use her intuition and she can use divination to figure that out. It's kind of like a thing where she can feel out and, and figure out which witch, which witch is which. Let's have her purchase of advertising. We'll do a long-term web campaign. Okay, so some, some customers need to be rung up. So we're going to have her do that. Hopefully the customers don't leave before she can do that. Stop chit-chatting and come over here and ring these customers up. Oh, there's another one. So we're making some sales today. Ring her up. Andromeda's aspiration is to be leader of the pack. Of course, that's what she wants to do is lead a coven. So that is her aspiration. And the coven is going to be under a group or a club just to make things easier. So here's a new crest witch coven and she and amethyst so the only two in it right now and on um, andromeda has a lot of skills because she is a high priestess and has completed her training so she has uh, uh, mastered charisma and cooking 
gardening, of course, her handiness is good, herbalism, mischief, <laughs> vampire lore, wellness, and writing. Um, and she's working on some other skills as well, like her logic skills she's working on and a couple of other things. She's just going to ring up a few more customers and then she's going to close for the day. And she has a couple of tasks that she needs to get done today. One of the things that she is trying to accomplish that no one knows about except for her is she is trying to conjure a spell to summon the Trimorphic Sorceress. And there are, there are a lot of different groups in the supernatural occult world here in, in, this, um, in this gameplay. There are vampires and there are witches and there are fairies and there are also sorcerers. Sorcerers are not witches. They have, they're kind of like a, a rogue cast of witches and the witches usually don't want to be involved with the sorcerers at all because they are kind of rogue they don't really follow any rules they do whatever they want but andromeda is very intrigued with them and she does want to learn their powers so she wants to summon the trimorphic sorceress and see if she can learn from from her so she found a spell in one of her spell books and she is going to try to gather the ingredients. There's a bunch of ingredients that she has to has to gather. Okay, so let's ring up these customers and then we'll close the store. So she's looking at her notebook here, reading what the ingredients that she needs. And the ingredients that she needs are dust sprite, which I believe is an insect, a fi firefly, muckleberry, poison leaf, noxious elderberry, a bonefish, a batfish, and a pre 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 sim head. Some of these things she might have in the garden already. We'll go out to the garden and see what she has. Let's see what we have. There are some herbs and things here. That's tomato, parsley. Does she need parsley? No, she needs muckleberry, poison leaf, not just elderberry. Death flower, no. Dragon fruit, bonsai shrub, death flower. Okay, fire leaf. Oh no, she needs poison leaf. Okay, what is that? Fire leaf. Normal poison fire leaf, is that? I think that's it. Okay, so we'll harvest this. Hipper come down and harvest that. What else? There's a poison fire leaf. Paisley, or parsley, parsley. Huckleberry, huckleberry. Oh, here's a muckleberry. Okay, so she needs muckleberry, so we'll harvest that. And that might be it. She might need to... Go foraging for the noxious elderberry. Unless she has it in her inventory because she has some things. Let's see, what is this? Oh, she has huckleberry, poison fire leaf. That looks like a tulip, a rose, bluebells, snapdragon. What is this? Noxious elderberry. Okay, she does have, she only has one though. I don't know how many she needs. And she's got a bunch of muckleberry in Wolfsbane. So we might need to go and find some noxious elderberry. and we, Maybe we should plant this one and go find some. We'll plant it because I'm sure she's going to need more than one, you know, because this is her first time doing this spell. And um, it's definitely not a spell that she was taught by her family. So she may need to, you know, do it a couple of times. Why is she so out of sorts? Irksome itch. Uh-oh. She might need to... Unpleasant surroundings. Okay. Um, so she's sick? What are, are you getting sick? What does that mean? When a nasty... What a nasty... Oh, from the fire leaf plant. Well, there's nothing you can do about that. You'll just... You'll live through it. 
Okay, so she's going to go clean up. And then, okay, so we have, oh, here is another interesting person, Spencer Wells. Um, I need to get out of the house. Want to join me for dinner at Dead Laszlo's place. Spencer Wells is not really her boyfriend. They are lovers. <laughs> She's been seeing him or dating him since she was in high school. He's a bit older than her. Her parents don't know anything about him. Her family doesn't know anything about him. He's not a witch, which is the reason why they don't know anything about um about him other than the fact that they want her to marry Vance Stroud but if she wasn't going to marry Vance Stroud she definitely would marry a witch that would be what the, her family wants her to do and you know she's not sure that she wants to marry him or anything she just likes him and enjoys spending time with him and you know she's not committed to him they're not boyfriend girlfriend but they do um you know date and hang out and hook up and things like that so maybe she will go and and see Spencer and then she can go out foraging for some of this other stuff that she needs to get, which I'm going to have to figure out where she gets them, you know, like fishing for certain things. So let's have her go and meet Spencer. Oh, she's, oh, she's itchy from, <laughs> oh, she's still itchy from the poison leaf. Okay. So go over here and say hi to Spencer. Ask him about his day. Spencer is an artist. And he's an art critic. He lives in San Machuno. And he's a sim that the Ebony Simmer created. And I kind of just changed him up a little bit. I'll uh, post her a link to her video. Or to, yeah, to her actual, the, she did a cast video of him. But um, I did a, um, a little makeover on him because I didn't have all the cast, of course, the sh or the CC that she had. So he's very wooed by her, you know, because she's so gorgeous and everything. But um, Spencer is a little, he's a little weird. What are, what are these two going through? She's embarrassed? Why is she embarrassed? If, he is a little weird. I don't know if he's non-committal or what his problem is. He just, and I think she finds him kind of like a challenge because he's hot and cold. He's on and off. He's an artist. He's kind of snobby a little bit you know he he's full of himself he has a huge ego because he's a critic and um but she kind of finds him almost a challenge and he's older than her you know he's definitely under her power not that she did a spell on him or anything but he's very attracted to her because of her witchiness and because of her confidence and her beauty and 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 her and just because she is so wise and and you know exudes that but then he's hot and cold but then he can't stay away from her like he you know just called her up and is like uh you know i want to get out the house can we meet so why don't they go and get something to eat and um just brighten his day and you know don't share insecurities that is definitely not her let's eat here let's just have request the table here see if they can get something to eat she's not really hungry but you know she she hasn't seen him in a while he, you know, he just found out that she moved to Newcrest. Um, you know, he, he also, for the longest time, didn't believe she was a witch. You know, a lot of people don't believe, even though they've seen things and there's all kinds of evidence, they don't believe in witches or vampires or aliens and things. So, and, you know, witches, there's nothing about them that looks any different than the regular people. He didn't really believe that she was a witch for the longest time. He just thought maybe she said the word witch because he knows that she's an excellent gardener and she likes to mix herbal teas and, and she's a great herbalist and things like that. So he just thought she was using that word <laughs> to describe what she does. But he finally, after a while, you know, more recently after she finished her initiation, figured out that she is truly indeed a witch. And um, I think that has intrigued him even more, even though he finds it a little weird. But he does really like her. Do an inside joke. He's flirty too. So let's see if they can, you know, since they haven't seen each other in a while, see if they can um, flirt and, and things. They don't really have, you know, they're not boyfriend and girlfriend. They don't really have that type of relationship but they do see each other and they do see other people i'm sure i'm sure he's seeing other people and she has seen other people too so she's not definitely trying to commit to to him or anybody right now other than her studies that's pretty much what she is committed to
of course she's not gonna tell Spencer about his about why she's really in Newcrest and what her family has planned for her. He doesn't need to know all that. That's witch business. That's not anything for Spencer to know right now. And um, but she he does know that she is here to start a coven and to continue her witch studies. Where did she go? Oh, she went to the bathroom. Okay, come on. Well, they're done with their meal. She's just going to say goodbye to Spencer and head on out. She's going to go to Forgotten Hollow to see if she can get this batfish, which I believe you have to go to Forgotten Hollow to fish for. So um, she's just going to do that and hopefully find it on her first try. I don't even know if she has fishing skills. I think she does because she has to fish to get certain ingredients for certain spells. We'll say goodbye and then we'll head on over to Forgotten Hollow. She'll probably harvest some plasma fruit, which I see is over here while she's here. She has a couple of plasma fruit trees at the shop. There's a little garden over there that she's starting as well with a bunch of trees, which I keep forgetting. That's a batfish right there. Come on and get on this hook, batfish. There's a couple of them, come on now. Um, so yeah, but she wants to, she wants to have as many, uh, what is that? I don't know. She wants to have as many trees and things that she can. Yay, she caught a batfish. Okay, excellent. Hopefully she just needs one. Don't screw it up, Andromeda. Let me see. There it is. Batfish. All right, excellent. Okay, so now we need, what other things we need? We need a bone fish, which you can't get here. You can get someplace else. And the pre, pre, pre sim head, which I don't even know where you get that. So Amethyst is probably home wondering where she is. So let's go home. She got the batfish. She's back at her apartment and she's very happy, I guess. She's excited that she got that bone fish so quickly or whatever what was it, batfish. I think what I'm going to do is put her things that she's collecting in in this treasure chest because I think I can. I think that's what I can do. Okay, so and that will help us keep track. So she has the batfish. Can I put that in there? Oh, I can. Okay, excellent. So she has the batfish. Poison leaf. Okay, so let's put a few of those in here. She does have the muckleberry, right? She's got a lot of those. So we'll put three of those in there as well. At least she has those in the garden. And, um, you know, if she needs more, she can. So we have those things. And then let's go downstairs into the lab and see if she has the dust spirit and the firefly. I don't know what kind of insect she has there. And then she can also say hi to Amethyst. And we got to check and see how Amethyst is doing with her needs. She may not need to go out and find somebody. She really feels guilty after she does it. She doesn't particularly care for it. And let's see, what kind of insects do they have? So this is a rainbow firefly. Is that different than a regular firefly? A stink bug? And then she's got some frogs over here. I'm going to have to look it up to see if a rainbow firefly is different than a regular firefly. Amethyst energy is, is pretty low as far for the eating so she her aspiration is to be a best-selling author her mother's an author as well or one of her mothers she has two mothers and that is um where she gets kind of that trait from so her hunger is low and i'm gonna have her i don't know if she could find somebody out here oh somebody is is coming by why does he, why is he dressed like that? He's, he's got, he looks a little criminal. Like he's, why does he have gloves on? Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> he has got everything on. He has got everything on. And oh, the jewelry and the gloves. You go, boy. I know she doesn't want to woohoo. <laughs> she just wants to drain their energy. She definitely doesn't want to woohoo with people. So this is what her succubus does. She's, there she goes. So she's done. I don't know if he's going to fall out or what. Did that help her? Yep, yeah, that put her energy or her hunger back up. So 
Yeah, I don't know if he falls out or not. Sometimes when she does it, he falls out. I'm not quite sure if it's a, um, a different action or what. But so she's feeling she's feeling better. Her hunger is better, and it always gives you know some of the romance to their relationship when she uses her succubus power. So she ends up having a lot of people under her romantic. <laughs> under her romantic spell and that's really not amethyst as you can see she gets she's just as kind of plain she doesn't wear a lot of makeup and you know it's just definitely the succubus trait would better suit someone else definitely not not her what? so these two are doing their nightly ritual of meditating and levitating at the altar i think i'm going to end this episode here i hope you enjoyed it i know it was kind of like an intro and setup of the characters and everything but you got a little more info about andromeda and got to meet amethyst in the next episode we will continue on with getting to know these two and seeing if Andromeda has the 411 on any new witches that she can uh, bring into the coven. So hopefully she'll find somebody and we can bring another member into the household and get this underway. Eventually we'll be meeting her family and getting to know them a little bit more and some other characters. So I hope you stick around and are excited for the New Crest Witches gameplay as much as I am. So that is it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you in my next.